Otto says, Flurn has taught me so much of the technical and creative side of photography in Photoshop. I've definitely gained confidence to try new things. Maury says, I really enjoy Kat. She's an awesome addition to the team. Mitch says, luckily I found Flurn at the beginning of my photographic journey and it's led me to where I am now. Dwayne says, Flurn has changed my view on pretty much everything. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new, redesigned, very, very cool Flurn.com. We make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And this is fan week. We're celebrating you guys as the fans. So every single day this week, we're actually using images that you suggested and submitted. And today's episode is brought to you by Megan Davies. Megan submitted this awesome image of a girl floating in water. It's like really cool murky water. And I was looking at the image and she was, she was talking about how she was editing it and she didn't think it looked natural with the, you know, the milky cloudy water. I think it looks great. And I was like, how can we, how can we have fun with this? And the idea came to add some fish to this image. I'm gonna put fish in the water. And uh, so we're gonna show you guys how to take fish, how to use blending modes to kind of get them to look like they're actually in the water. Then I'm gonna show you guys some really cool things you can do with blurring and coloring, adding some light to these guys to really make them look like they're behind the water. And then we're gonna copy over bubbles and textures and things like that over top of the fish to really set them down in deep. It's gonna be a cool, cool episode. I can't wait for it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's our image by Megan, and here are a couple of fish from uh, Fotolia.com, our awesome stock website that provides us images for Flurn. Let's go ahead and bring these in and uh, just kind of copying and pasting them or using your move tool to click and drag. Now we're gonna hit F for full screen, and um, we, first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and resize these fish. So I'm gonna hit Command T. We're gonna click on this little chain link between our width and our height, and I'm just gonna scale this right on down. All right, right about there looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing with this one here. All right, very cool. Now, first thing I need to do is kind of figure out where I want these fish to go. And I'm actually gonna create a couple of copies here. So let's do, I'm gonna hit Command T. I was kind of playing around with this earlier and I found that actually having some like slightly out of the frame made it look a little more realistic. I find that when you composite images together, like if everything is perfect, it can tend to look a little bit more like a composite. But if things are a little bit on the imperfect side, um, things tend to look a little more real. So I'm gonna have uh, at least one of those guys is gonna be out of the frame. All right, let's hit uh, Command J on this. I'm actually gonna make a few duplicates. And uh, Command T will bring up your transform dialog. You can do this. You can right click and you can hit flip horizontal and that'll just flip it the other way. And then you can even do things like right click and go to warp and then you can really just change a lot about how these fish look. There we go. Just make sure it still looks like a fish. Um, very cool. So although it's the same fish as that one, it's not necessarily gonna look the exact same. All right, let's do Command J to duplicate that one. We're gonna bring him up here. We're gonna shrink him down. Let's bring him over there and I'm gonna hit right click and go down to warp. So we're gonna bring him there and then all right, this is gonna be fun, I can't wait. We're gonna do another one of this. Now, keep in mind with these fish, just make sure you get your angle and everything like that right because you know these fish have to be, um, there we go. They have to be shot from above, right? So don't, if you're gonna be doing something like this, just make sure you're not using uh, pictures of fish that are shot from the side because it's obviously not gonna work right for your perspective. Okay. The next thing I need to do is get rid of this white. Now, these images are great because they're shot on white backdrops. Makes it super easy to cut these fish out. I'm gonna shift click all those layers together and I'm gonna change the blending mode of all of them at the same time down to multiply. Very, very cool. So they're all becoming multiply layers. And when you use a multiply layer, uh, basically what happens is your whites or anything that's really, really light will disappear. All right, there we go. So now I can kind of like decide, okay, where are all these little fishies gonna go? All right, there we go, that one looks good. I'm gonna do one more duplicate of this one here. We're gonna hit Command T, right click and say flip horizontal, and then we'll just make it really, really small. All right. He's kinda uh, giving her a nibble there. <laughs> Why not? 
All right, that looks pretty good. I, I kind of like what's going on there. OK, so we have a bunch of different options at this point. We can choose to work on these all as like individual layers, or I can just merge them all together and basically use them all as though they were the same layer. And for the, in this case, I'm actually OK with that. I'm going to merge all these layers together, and we're going to work on all the fish at the same time. Really, really cool. So I'm going to shift click all those layers. OK, we're going to hit Command E, and that merges them all together. Now, when you do that, it strips your blending mode. So I need to make sure we go from normal back down to multiply, and then we're good to go. So all of our fish are on the same layer. OK, let's go ahead and hit Command G on that. Double click here and just call this fish. So we've grouped them all together. Now, here comes the fun part. There are a lot of things we need to do with these fish to actually make them look like they are in the water like adding blur to them. You can see things tend to get a little bit blurred as they go under the water. And we also need to make sure we add some of the color from the actual layers, like the, the water, right? Because you can see the water actually does color our subject. So that's, you know, that's basically those things that need to happen. All right, the first thing we're going to do is add our blur. And I'm excited about this because we get to use the blur, blur gallery. So we're going to go to filter, down here to blur gallery, and I'm going to use a field blur. OK, now the cool thing about a field blur is that you can create these little um, points, and you can blur more or less, right? Well, it's nice when you just decide to blur everything, but you can actually create a ton of little points. So let's say I'm going to blur that, but like this end of the fish, I don't want to be as blurred. So I'm going to actually like lessen the blur there. So I can click here, and I can click, you know, I want more blur there, and then I can click another point there. And I can say I want less blur, but on the tail, I want even more blur. So I can kind of define like their, basically their depth by how much blur each of these is getting. Let's go ahead and just give this one a little bit less of a blur. There we go. And this one will get even more of a blur there. All right. Really, really cool. So basically, we're just clicking around and deciding how much blur they have, and again, like the head is getting less of a blur than the tail, which I think that's really, really cool. So let's hit OK. There we go. And we're already well on our way. So you can see how like they already look like they're kind of like fading into the water, which is exactly what we needed. Very cool. The next thing we're going to do is color these fish. So a lot of ways you can do this. I'm going to grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. Option Command G is going to clip this adjustment layer to our fish layer, meaning it's only going to affect that layer. All right, let's go ahead and bring down our saturation. You know what? I'm going to hit this Colorize button. So we can actually choose to give them kind of like some of the color that's in our, there we go, in our water there. So like if they were a green color, I could do that. But they're going to be kind of like this blue color and a little bit lower in saturation. They look kind of like sharks now. Um, that looks great. Let's go ahead and we're going to leave that color. Maybe I'm going to lighten them up a little bit. There we go. That looks good. And with this, I'm going to lower the opacity on this just a little bit so it's going to bring back some of the original color of our fish. OK, that looks really, really cool. So now we have these fish. Look at that. They're already like properly blurred and everything like that. And um, they're, they're colored in here decently well, too. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to create a new layer. Option Command G will clip this again. And now I'm just going to use my brush tool, and I'm going to actually sample the colors here in my, in my water. And I'm going to paint over certain areas of the fish. So I'm going to sample this color and paint right over top of the fish. I'm going to change this layer from normal down to lighten. OK, and let's just check, kind of check out what that does. Painting right over here, painting with the lightened blending mode. And what it's doing is it's basically taking some of the color here in my in my water and it's overlapping that color with our fish all right and it's lightening it up as it does as it does that as well so just like a, a really cool way to kind of make the fish look like it's deeper in the water because that's basically how it's you know how we're gonna all right it's looking cool how we're gonna make it look like their fish are actually under all right now, I'm going to make another duplicate of that. Sorry, just another layer. And then I'm going to just paint maybe about a flow of like 20% here and just kind of cover it up a little bit more, just in like certain areas. And I find whenever you're trying to do a composite, just it, it really helps out to actually make these like layers that just 
They add a little bit of variability to your image. In other words, I'm not trying to make this perfect. I'm like, you know, grabbing a color here, just going to paint a little bit over there. Um, anytime things just look like, you know, OK, that's a perfectly in focus fish that's this far underwater, and blah, 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 things just don't tend to look that real. Um, so I find that doing things like this, like just grabbing colors and painting it over top of the fish, look how much more they like blend in. Like we can see, you know, that even though they do have the blur on there, they look a lot more like blended in after we did all those really cool effects. All right, the next thing I want to do, this is kind of be, this is going to be a little fun. We're going to create a new layer and I'm just going to paint with white and black on this layer. And we're going to make like little like ripples um, from our fish. So I'm going to paint white and then black and then white and then black. All right, and these are going to show up in a minute as like little areas where the fish may have affected the water. All right, not a huge change I'm looking for here, just a little bit of an effect. You know, this is just, we're trying to make these guys look like they're actually in the water. So I'm going to change this layer from normal down here to soft light, OK? And then we're just going to give it a little bit of a blur. So a Gaussian blur. And let's just increase this until that starts to fade away. And it just starts to look a little bit more like, you know, not just like a brush stroke in Photoshop. So right about 12 or 13. There we go. That looks pretty good. So let's hit Command Z. There's the before and the after. So not a huge difference there, really. But it just looks like, OK, maybe these guys affected the water, like a little bit of a highlight and shadows going on. All right, very cool. And I'm just going to grab my eraser tool and paint it like 20% in just a way, erase any areas that it needs to go. All right, that looks great. Now, we're going to go ahead and close our fish group down. And I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hit Command G in here, and we're going to double click and call this bubbles. All right, apparently I had caps lock on, so these are bubbles. <laughs> on this layer, I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool, and we're going to clone stamp this guy right here, OK? Now, again, if I want just the lighter areas to show up, let's look at that over her forehead. Just the lighter areas, the bubble. I'm going to change this again from normal down to screen. So remember, multiply earlier made the light areas not show up. Now I want just the lighter areas to show up, so I'm using screen. OK, pretty good, right? Just the lighter areas show up. But it's too light, so I need to adjust this a little bit. And I can do that with my levels. So Command L will bring up our levels. And I'm going to take my black point and just bring it to the right a bit, OK? Just so we see the detail there in the bubble. All right, very cool. I can even erase away a little bit of this if I need to. All right, there we go. And it's a little bit too saturated. You can see it's, it's got that like real blue color to it. So then we hit Command U, and we just lower our saturation. Not a big deal. That was pretty easy to do. All right, so here we've got a bubble that I can stick on anything. I can you know, make it smaller and put it on our lip or whatever we have, right? OK, so we're just going to store that one over there. And I'm going to do this a couple more times. So now we've got a bubble over here. And it's best to choose a bubble that has like dark areas, or relatively dark areas at least, underneath it. And that's just going to help you get that difference when it comes to the light areas and the dark areas. There we go. Command U to adjust our saturation. And hit OK. All right, so now we've got another set of bubbles over here. Now, we're actually going to copy some of these guys over as well. These like little bits of reflection, all right? So we're going to change that blend mode to screen. We're going to bring our dark point up, hit Command U, and lower that down a little bit. So why are we doing this? Well, it's really because we need these fish to look like they're deep, right? We need it to look like they're under the water. And a really good way to do that is by adding water detail that should be above them over top of them, right? And so these like bubbles and these little, you know, things like this, there's there's really nothing better when it comes to detail to add over top of our fish because these areas 
their actual detail from this photo. All right, here we go. Let's bring our levels. We're almost done here, and then we're going to choose to do, um, there we go, Command U. We'll just bring the saturation down on that. All right. Just do this one more time. I'm going to grab that little guy. All right. And this, we have a couple of options here. I could just duplicate these over and over again and just kind of use these everywhere I need to, which is probably what I'm going to do. Or I could just try to, you know, get new bubbles for everything. All right, so these are like duplicate bubbles, right? So let's go ahead and make our fish visible. All right, and check this out. We already have some duplicate bubbles over top of that fish, right? Like, oh, cool, that looks real. So I'm just going to hit Command J on a couple of these and pop them like basically right over top of the other fish that we have in this image. And you know what I'm going to actually do? I'm going to take the entire, all the layers in the bubble group and I'm going to group those together and I'm going to hit Command J on that. And that's just going to duplicate all those layers. All right, so now I can just choose to put something like that right over there, hit Command J. And you, you don't have to stick with like just this. I can hit Command T. I can make these really small. I can rotate them around and stuff like that too, right? So I don't have to keep them exactly how they looked before. Um, in fact, it helps if you don't because then they actually look like, you know, they actually look like different bubbles, which is really what you want ideally, right? All right. That looks pretty cool. Command J. We'll put a, put a big bubble on that one. And then if you need to put a layer mask, you can layer mask groups just like you can layer mask layers, right? So then we just layer mask that entire group. All right, there we go. So here are bubbles you guys can see. Let me just zoom in here. We can see, let's look at that fish there. The difference that adding those bubbles makes because putting that stuff over top of the fish really does make it look like the fish are underneath the bubbles. All right, this was a cool effect, but I'm going to lower the opacity because it was it's just a little bit too much. All right, and then underneath the bubbles as well, I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer. Let's just put that in with our fish. Lower the brightness there. Hit Command I on the layer mask, and then I'm going to paint with white. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of a vignette here. Add some darker areas to these fish. All right, there we have it. So I, I think this is awesome, actually. Let's do a little bit more. All right, a new layer, and then I want to grab this color and just paint like a little bit more anywhere you need to. Or you can even do some other cool things. Like if you need to add more blur in key places, you have things like your blur tool, and you can even sample all layers with your blur tool. I'm just going to use my brush tool and kind of like paint in a little bit of like you know, variability here. I don't know what else to call it, but you know, areas where you don't see the fish. That's basically my goal. That's cool. It kind of looks dangerous. Living on, living on the edge, swimming with the fishes. All right. Very, very cool. So you can see adding those fish is a really great way we can change their opacity basically using layer masks and painting these colors over top of them using light and blend modes. We can add the blur and remember we use that field blur so we could actually blur different parts of the fish and then we added those bubbles over top of them which really helped to sell the effect that you can see here and here. Very, very cool. So if you guys go about compositing things together, just remember depth and layers and every little trick that you can do to make things look like they're further inside of a photo, like they're deeper into a photo, those things are gonna really help out make a composite look believable. Guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I don't think that I ever planned on compositing fish into a photo, but I'm glad I did. And if you like what we're doing here at Florin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you guys can receive free videos just like this every single week. And if you have a cool idea for an episode, please leave it in a comment down below because that's where we get our ideas for these episodes. And again, be sure to share with uh, everyone you know. There's a share button on YouTube and then just click that and then type in everyone's name and then they'll all know about Flurn and then we'll be a big happy family together. <laughs> Thanks a lot guys, I'll Flurn you later. Whew. I don't think I had a blooper that time.